you have a sense for how people living in Gaza perceive China and perceive Hamas? That's a great question. Because support for Hamas has increased throughout the region everywhere but Gaza. Where in Gaza, support for Hamas has dramatically decreased. Now, there are two possible explanations. One is that it hasn't actually decreased. It's just that the freedom of people to answer the polling question, that that's the change. That they're not as worried about the Hamas guy um, coming to remind them later um, to go back and change their answer uh, at best. That's possible. And it could also be the like, look, we've lived under these people and we know that they have brought this on us and we didn't want this. And so of, of all places, and this is separated by West Bank and Gaza, in all of these regional and local breakdowns, the place where support for Hamas has dropped the most um, and and is pretty low is Gaza. It's increased in the West Bank. Um, and yeah, I, I might what, about, what about China? Is there any polling about China and Gaza? To my knowledge, there has not been polling about about China and Gaza since the war began. Probably due to the nature of the, the war itself. Um, sure. And that doesn't seem that important, right? Yeah, and I think the polling on Gaza is able to take place because you also have a lot of Israelis that are native Arabic speakers and Israeli Arabs who you know do it and. and they're all going to be focused on perception of, of the conflict. Um, but in je- before the war, the support for China was fairly high, above 50%, if I remember correctly, across the West Bank and Gaza. Um, though not, you know, it's not like 90%. But majority had a favorable view. And the basis for that favorable view in the majority of those people is essentially comes down to uh, opposition to Israel and the West. And not necessarily Israel specifically, but sort of the broader like opposition to the West. Well, well since you mentioned West Bank, we haven't really, we've been focusing obviously on Gaza and Hamas. Uh, what, is, what is China doing as far as the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank? China actually has a, had a very hands-off approach, at least, maybe not, um, uh, uh, yeah, at least when it comes to providing any sort of real assistance, right? China has provided, in terms of humanitarian aid, Not I'm not talking about the war, but just over the last year, um, to the Palestinian Authority um, as a whole, I believe it's about one one-hundredth of the amount that just Japan has, right? And so China has very much um, tried to steer clear of being involved in internal Palestinian dynamics to the extent that there are too many, uh, 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 too much political machinations at the the moment. I think China sees that there is nothing to gain by it. I would guess that what they are doing is... And, and not the only ones doing this, is biding their time a little bit, looking ahead to when Mahmoud Abbas, who has been the leader of the PA, essentially just rules the West Bank for you know, 20 years now or so. He's 87. He's human. So at some point, we all die. I think like many actors, not just China, I think people are just looking a bit ahead and are trying to position themselves to be in the good graces of whoever it is that takes over. And, you know, for someone who's that old and been in power for that long, it is almost remarkable that we don't have uh, any sort of universal consensus about who it will be. He isn't named a successor. There are a few possible people. The number one candidate is in Israeli prison for murder. And... So it's sort of it's sort of unclear, but they have generally had a fairly light touch. So you s- said earlier that you see the conflict between Hamas and Israel to 
be winding down in the next few months. Um, how do you see that going? Well, let me clarify a, a little bit. I think over the next few months, what will wind down is the sort of warlike aspect of that war in terms of air constant airstrikes, in terms of the number of boots on the ground, which have already been um, withdrawn a bit, right? I think that the, the things that seem familiar to people as like what a war looks like, I think that that is going to be winding down. My hope is it's not going to be winding down as a war in the North winds up, although that is a possibility. Um, Israeli reservists, many, uh, many thousands of Israeli reservists have been told that they are going to be off duty from around now until mid-March, and then there is going to be another call-up. So there is some concern, I guess, although there's widespread support for opening another front in the north. Um, concern will be that it, it will, will go th there, but it will be, the war part will wind down, but the fight against Hamas will continue indefinitely. And I think that it will be like what we all saw in the movie Munich, and that, you know, Yahya Sinwar, uh, Khaled Mashal, Ismail Haniya, um, the Hamas leaders, Israel is going to kill them. Like, it's only a matter of, I mean, like it took us 10 years to get bin Laden. I don't think it will take Israel that long. But even if it takes them that long, they're going to find these guys and kill them. And so, right. I mean, they just killed the uh, strategist in Beirut. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is like, you know, basically Israel launching an airstrike in another country. Except in that case, if you look at the images and the reports, they managed to do that only blowing up the single room and only killing Hamas members. There were no Lebanese citizens killed in that. Um, and I don't think that that was an accident, um, right? That they have been somewhat uh, as careful as they can. And I would guess that right now, almost literally, uh, because Amos Hochstein, who was the lead negotiator of the, or works for the State Department, who was the lead negotiator of the Israeli Lebanese maritime border agreement, which required sort of Hezbollah's tacit approval. Hoxstein negotiated that over the course of about 15 years. So he's very well connected in terms of negotiations between Israel and all actors in Lebanon. He was sent over there, I think, again, I think he arrived yesterday or he's arriving today. My guess is part of his role there is going to be to like try to calm things down not to talk Israel out of going after Hamas, but to try to calm things down between Hezbollah and Israel and to sort of establish a sort of revamped rules of the road for how they're going to deal with each other.